we are here with Bryce Gillette from Luxury Brands of America, and we are celebrating our second year anniversary at the True Face store. So we just wanted to do a little overview of Luxury Brands and share some of the pens that you brought for us this weekend. So thank you for being here. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. So why don't we start with just an overview of Luxury Brands, the brands they distribute. Sure. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we distribute, uh, we've distributed platinum and noodlers for a really long time. Um, that those are kind of our long, long standing brands that we've had for a while. Um, about three years ago, we started distributing Waltman, Benu, and Colorverse Inc. Um, and then this year we started distributing Joya. Um, we also distribute um, Nebula Notebooks, which is a sister company of Colorverse, um, as well as Inkvisor. Okay. Nice. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like it's growing pretty rapidly. Yeah, yeah. Well, so we moved into a new warehouse uh, this year in uh, March, I believe. And so when we moved into the new warehouse, we were not looking at getting any new brands. But Joya approached us. We really liked the product. So we, we decided to bring in Joya while we kind of already had some things on our plate. But yeah, it's been great. Yeah. Good. Where are you guys located at? So we're in Troutman, North Carolina, which is about 42 miles north of Charlotte. Okay. Yeah. And um, are there a lot of employees that make all of this happen? Yeah. So it's a pretty much a family-run business. Uh, my father is CEO, CEO. My mother is COO, and I'm under them. And then uh, my brother and sister-in-law actually are the warehouse and inventory managers of the warehouse and everything. And then we have other people who do order fulfillment and stuff like that. But Very nice. Yeah, yeah. So we're it's a tight knit group. Um, there's a lot to do, but that's you know kind of how we like it. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. So you guys will probably be talking about pens over Thanksgiving. Yeah, Thanksgiving. yeah. So sometimes we have a rule where we're like, okay, we're gonna sit down and we're not gonna talk about <laughs> pens. No <laughs> pens. Yeah. yeah, love that. Yeah. So let's jump in and talk about some of the things that you brought sure. here this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll just work our way from my right to left. Um, so we have the Benu Vodka on the Rocks, which has been by far the most popular pen Benu has made. Um, you know, Benu is definitely known for not making anything that's subtle. Um, and this is probably what people, you know, think is the epitome of Benu. They also came out with recently the Bourbon, which is the sister pen of the Vodka on the Rocks. It just looks like bourbon in the mm -hmm. glass. Um, so yeah, that's what I bought from Banu. I also brought, you know, everything from the Scepter collection as well as uh, we have the new, brand new 5 Briolettes to show this weekend as well. They're not launching yet, but we can show people them, so that'll okay. be exciting. Uh, we brought the full line of Joya here. Uh, this one right here is Zagrada Azura. Uh, it is a rhodium trim, I mean, I'm sorry, it's a rubidium trim pin. The pins made in Italy, the entire pin, except for the nib, which is yellow. Okay. Um, and it's a piston filler, so that's this is a really nice pin. It retails for one ninety. Um, we brought everything from Platinum, from the thirty seven seventy six. Uh, Chris had some Procyons with him. Mm -hmm. Brought some Macchia stuff, but some of the really nice stuff that we brought is the Orokamon and the Aurora. This is the Orokamon. This is actually featured in Pin World Magazine this past issue. Um, and this has gold leaf, gold powder, and abalone inlaid in it. And the abalone, as you can see, kind of has different colors as it goes around. Uh -huh. you know, it's got blue and purples in there. As Is well, that one new? It's not new. Um, it's been around for a few years. Uh, the design has, but they did move it to the Azumo body not too long ago. Okay. So, which is this larger body here. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the Aurora is also they pretty much the same age, um, but again, they moved into the larger body not too long ago. Okay. So, yeah. And like I said, we have all of the, you know, all the 3776s and everything like that um, here. So, a big thing also that came out was a bunch of new pins from Walden. Uh, we've been distributed from Walden for coming up to three years now. We've worked with them really closely to release the new Tango Imagination which you see here, which they did a really cool process on this. They took the um, sterling silver barrel and they engraved it. Mm -hmm. And then they took this uh, different colored lacquers with this aquamarine lacquer and they lacquered over it. 
And then they shaved it down to where you can kind of see the engraving and the lacquer on the same plane. Yeah. And then they clear lacquered over that. So, yeah. So it's a, a big process. Yeah, yeah. So that's a really, really cool pin. Um, it's very one of a kind where when you look at it, sometimes you look at it, it's very aqua green, uh -huh. and then other times you look at it, it's very silver. Yeah. So it kind of has like a nice play on light. The way that, yeah, the way yeah. the light hits it. This is also new, uh, one of the new pins. This is called the Grandeur. Um, this replaced the discontinued Commander. It's got a guilloche engraving in the barrel with a transparent burgundy lacquer over that, as well as um, a 925 sterling silver barrel and cap. So that's, that's Does this one come in other colors? It comes in also a black. The black has the guilloche engraving on the cap. This one has a um, lined engraving on the cap. So, okay. Yep. Wow. Yeah. So there's a few other things. You know, we brought all the Tuscanies, the new Tuscany, the new Vela and Frosted Ruthenium Tuscany from Waldman, as well as the new Liberty, the Aquamarine Wave Liberty. We brought those as well. So yeah, there's definitely a lot to uh, a lot to see. Nice. And all of this is out already, correct? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So what is upcoming? What can our customers be excited about for the future? Yeah. So I think I mentioned a little bit earlier, the new Benews are coming out. They're coming out with five new briolettes. Four of them are going to be the classic, the new glowing tips, which is nice. Um, so those are coming out soon, October 25th. So actually just in like a few days. Okay. Um, and then as well, we have a new North American exclusive 3776 coming out, which is very, very cool. Oh, great. Yeah, that's going to be very cool. It should be end of this year or early next year. Okay. We're not really sure. COVID kind of has production kind of all on a spin right now. So we don't really have a set timeline yet. And then we just got in the Galaxy of Zulu, which we are completely sold out of, but we have about 15 more coming this month, okay. which the Galaxy of Zumo is on this same body, but it has tiny bits of rotten all in it. So it looks like the stars on the pen. Wow. Yeah. So that one sold out. We sold out of 20 of them in a day. So they, yeah, they went. The fifteen will also go fast. Though. Yes, yeah. So they came, they came in quick, and they went out quick, and um, so those should be here this month as well. Um, and then the mistletoe from Banu. It's the new talisman. It's their Christmas special edition. Um, there will be three hundred total pieces. We're getting um, about one hundred and fifty, I think. Okay. So yeah, that'll be coming out December first. Of all of the news names. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> yeah. What's cool about the talisman is they took the mistletoe plant or holly or whatever yeah. you want to call it, and they ground it up and actually put it into the resin of the pin. Oh, wow. Like they've done with all of the oh, talisman pins. Uh -huh. um, so that's pretty cool. That is yeah. very unique. Yeah. I've never heard of that being done, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's how anybody has it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so, how did you get in found pens? It sounds like it started from your mom and dad. Yep. But mm -hmm. maybe how did they get in found pens? Yeah, so it was an interesting road um, for me and my parents, actually. So, my grandfather started luxury brands in okay. America. He and my grandmother um, were actually the first ones to bring in platinum and noodlers into the United, the United States and distribute them. Um, and when my grandfather got too sick to continue the business, they offered it to my parents because my mother had always been in the office supply, fountain pen, writing instrument mm -hmm. um, industry. So, yeah, so they invited them to kind of learn the business and eventually take over. They did. They took over. And then I actually received my undergrad and bachelor, I mean, my bachelor's and my master's degree in trombone performance from the New England Conservatory of Boston. Okay. I decided that after I got those two degrees, it's not quite what I wanted to do. Um, and then my parents offered me the job for luxury brands that I've been working my way up in the company, and I actually just got my MBA in May. <gasps> yeah, so that was exciting. That was nice to be done. That was like a three year because I was working full time and doing this. So yeah. yeah, so that's kind of how it kind of how it came about, uh -huh. um, my grandfather started it, and then we just kind of were offered to move in. And, yeah, you know, yeah. keep passing it down, I love yeah. that. Yeah. I love that it's staying in family. Yeah. So what does a day in your life typically look 
like? Sure, yeah. So I get to the office. I usually have quite a few emails to get through. Mm -hmm. um, I talk to Chris a lot. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, so my job is head of sales and marketing. So there's a lot to do in terms of marketing, especially for, you know, we have a new, we have another cover for the Pin World magazine coming out. We have to get photography for that. We have to, you know, I'm in charge of sending what pins out to our photographer. Mm -hmm. um, shout out Garrett, he's awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, so I do a lot of that. I'm also in charge of Instagram. So just figuring out what posts to do, what pictures to do, that kind of right. thing. Right, yeah. Um, on top of that, you know, we send out a lot of pins to influencers on Instagram or samples and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So I've got to figure out on a daily what pins I'm sending out. And then once all that's done, then I kind of take care of the sales side of things where I make sure Chris has everything he needs. If he doesn't, you know, we have a meeting, talk about what he needs, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. So yeah, it's, it's a lot of conversing with people, which I like. Um, and yeah, and that, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. Yeah. So, a lot of yeah communication that yeah. customers, influencers, yeah. the stores. Exactly, yeah. Um, are there any pins that you guys or any brands that you guys have mm -hmm. a direct relationship with to actually um, develop the pin? Yeah, like for are you meaning did we specifically come up with give them like an idea, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So with platinum how I said earlier, they moved this design and the Aurora mm -hmm. design, and now the Galaxy design, because that used to be on the 3776, over to the Azuma. That was actually our idea. Okay. Um, because Platinum, Platinum and Japanese brands in general are very traditional about how they do things, and they, you know, they like to take a lot of time to consider all the options and everything. So it took a while to convince them to do it. Uh -huh. But, you know, I mean, when you look at the designs of these pins, you need a large pin to really show off the artisanship right. of what's on there. Right. So we came out, we, well, we didn't come out, but we kind of suggested that they switch it and they did. Mm -hmm. So that was cool. Waldman as well. I have, um, I've been talking with them for the past year and a half about coming out with more colorful engraved style pins. And then they yeah. just recently in August came out with all of these. So yeah, so we we definitely, you know, are we're very um, we're very fortunate that our manufacturers trust us and know mm -hmm. what the customers want in the United States, right. and so yeah, we're very fortunate that you know our manufacturers listen. So yeah, yeah it's very cool. And how do you guys get that information just from your day to day communication with all of the customers? Yeah, yeah, customers either via Instagram. We have people email us. Mm -hmm. um, talking to people like Chris here at Trufe of just what he hears of what people and just looking at sales numbers too, you know, yeah. seeing what sells more than other things. Um, yeah, but I would definitely say, you know, social media has changed how we do things so yeah, much yeah. to where you can get instant feedback from the community just by posting one of those ask us a question well, or what yeah. do you think of this mm -hmm. and you get a pretty good idea of if you get 20 answers you get a pretty good idea of what where people are leaning yeah. um, so that's one way we do it and you know just also we do quite a few pin shows a year talking to people at pin shows you know they're like oh I love this but it was only in red you know uh -huh. yeah or just something like yeah. that and you just kind of start hearing the same answers over and over and over again and it kind of gets you a good idea yeah of what people I think obviously the communication face to face is great, yeah. but on Instagram or social media, you get that instant result. Exactly. And it's great that you guys can then turn that over to the brands. And right. Something exactly. Produced. And and it's so far reaching. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, you can reach people all over the country that normally, you know, if you go to the San Francisco pin show, you're only talking to people in San Francisco. Correct. Yeah. Which, you know, it's so funny. You go to San Francisco, certain things sell there that don't sell at all in Dallas. Yeah. So you kind of have to, you know, take everything with a grain of salt, but, you know, um, social media gives you that really overarching expanse of people that you can choose from. Right, so. yeah. And it gives you more of a reach for any pen enthusiast, than yeah. like any certain brand. It's not they follow you for a specific brand. Exactly, right, yeah. right. Yeah, and that's kind of the thing, like, 
with our with our Instagram, we obviously promote the brands we distribute. But what we really, what our end goal is to do is just to grow the fountain pen community in general. Mm -hmm. You know, because let's say someone doesn't, you know, gets into fountain pens but doesn't buy any of the brands that we represent, but that doesn't mean that they necessarily won't make another road. Correct. You know, yeah. and if you get them hooked with a lobby or with a Kaveco or, mm -hmm. you know, with a Coffin or whatever it is, you know, I think it just really helps us as a whole in, in the industry. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, I agree. The community is pretty powerful. Yeah. I am finding out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a deep, deep rabbit hole yeah. for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um. So my last question for you is, what is mm -hmm. the craziest Kenner Inc. Um, story that you've got? Yeah, sure. So this, if you've heard me talk on a few podcasts, you definitely have might have heard this story. And if the person who this story goes with is hearing this, we still talk about it. <laughs> um, yeah, no, so this one time, it was, um, uh, it was before I was working for the company, um, my parents got a, a call from a guy uh, who was very panicked, and he was like, is Bay State Blue toxic? And we're like, no, it's water-based, it's fine. I mean, you know, I wouldn't sit there and, like, put it in a mojito, but, yeah. like, you know, you're, you, if you get it on you, you actually get some of your mouth, like, you're not going to die. You'll be fine. And so, thank God. And we're like, why? And he's like, well, my daughter accidentally dumped a 4.5 ounce bottle of Bay State Blue on her head. And she was a blonde, too. Uh -huh. So she literally looked like a smurf. Like, her, her, she was blue, her skin was blue, and her hair was green because she had blonde hair. So we were like, okay, we, we're not going to show this to anybody. Can, like, can you, like, please send a picture? Yeah. Like, this is hilarious. Like, Fix it didn't happen. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> Fix it didn't happen. And he did, and she literally looked like a smurf. So that was, you know, of course, we sent him a new bottle right. and stuff like that. And we're like, um, was it on a rug? You know, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. But, yeah, that, that's probably the funniest, the funniest story we've ever had. Was she little? She was. She was, like, four. Yeah, and he goes, and what also was really funny is the, the bottle being dumped on her head. So and she thought it was hilarious. Yeah. So then she started putting it everywhere. Uh, <laughs> so she learned every every piece of skin she had was blue. It was hilarious. Oh Kids yeah. are notorious for doing stuff. Yeah. Love yeah. that happened with that ink. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the blue, of course. Right. right? Exactly. I feel like that's the harshest stain that you're. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that was that's probably the funniest the funniest one that we have. Yeah. Love that. Well, I hope they are still watching then. Yes. Listening. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Bryce. Thank you. Um, and if you guys are interested in purchasing anything shown here or anything that he brought this weekend, we will have it for you in store or online for you to purchase. Yep. Thank you. Thank you.